Summary of Common Sense by Thomas Paine Thomas Paine says that because Britain's king and parliament have been unfair to the American colonies, the Americans are right to look into and even reject Britain's usurping power. He also says that Britain has attacked natural rights that everyone, not just Americans, should care about. Paine starts by talking about what government is and how it works. He then makes a distinction between society and government. He says that society is a good thing that comes from people's wants and shared feelings. On the other hand, government is nothing more than a necessary evil that keeps people from being bad. In other words, people only need government when they can't be good on their own. Because the goal of government is to keep people free, the best kind of government is the one with the fewest rules. The English Constitution, on the other hand, is too complicated and only makes injustice legal. Paine gives a more in-depth critique of royalty and inherited power. He does this because he thinks everyone should be treated the same. Paine says that the Bible shows that royalty is not Christian, can lead to violence, and should be thrown out. Hereditary succession is even worse than being a king because it forces corrupt masters on future generations for many generations. It also makes rulers who are proud and don't care about what real people want or need. Lastly, he makes a long list of wars, rebellions, and battles over succession that have happened in England alone. He says this is more proof that the practice isn't right. Paine gets to the heart of his case in the section called The Present State of American Affairs. He says that what he will talk about will be based on nothing but common sense. He says that the time to hope for peace is over because Britain has taken up guns, and it's time for a new way of thinking. He says it's a mistake to say that things will always be the same because America used to do well when it was close to Great Britain. It's like saying a kid must always eat baby food. Also, political and religious refugees from all over Europe, not just England, came to live in the United States. So, America's strong trade and business resources will help the country strategically more than Britain's military protection ever could. Britain's continued military protection will only get America involved in wars in other countries. Payne switches to an emotional pitch by accusing his audience, which is made up of regular Americans, of being cold and uncaring if they don't feel sorry for the people of besieged Boston. Anyone with human feelings who looks at Britain's recent actions should come to the conclusion that split is the only healthy and fair thing to do. Even if peace could be made with Britain, King George III would set himself up as an authoritarian leader of the United States. This would ruin the country in the long run, even if peace could be made in the short term. Payne gives some ideas for how an independent America could be run in the future, such as having a Continental Congress and charter and letting each colony choose a president in turn. The government should always put the security of property, freedom, and the right to practice religion first. Payne talks about some real things that an independent America would need to do, like building a navy. He also points out some good things about America, like the fact that it is young and the right size, neither too small nor too big and varied, for making a new government and putting it in place. He comes to the conclusion that until America takes the initiative to seek freedom, the need will only grow and America's situation will get worse. Payne adds some responses to a speech by King George III, which he calls a piece of villainy to the second and later versions of common sense. In the appendix, he mostly repeats arguments against America being ready to be independent. He says, for example, that the United States now has enough military experience to fight for independence and that the longer the job is put off, the harder it will be. The longer it takes, the more likely it is that a mob or group mindset will take hold and keep America from putting together a good constitution. Lastly, he argues against a Quaker objection to rebellion by saying that the Quakers should be against unprovoked British aggression just as much as they are against American revolt. If they don't, then their pacifist position is just inconsistent and unwanted meddling. About the author. Thomas Paine was born in England. His parents, Joseph and Francis Paine, were farmers and corset makers. When he was young, he learned from his father how to make corsets, which he did in Sandwich, Kent, where he lived. 
By the end of the 1760s, when Paine was in his 30s, he started to care more about public issues, and his pro-republican and anti-monarchical beliefs started to take shape. During a rough time in his life, he moved to London and met Benjamin Franklin. His business had failed, he had to sell his house to escape debtor's prison, and he had split up with his wife. Soon after that, Franklin gave Paine a letter of approval. This let Paine move to and live in the British colonies in America in 1774. Paine started to work as a writer and editor, and his articles did well when they were written for a wide audience. In 1776, he released Common Sense without his name on it. Soon after, he published The American Crisis. After the American Revolution, he worked on the Congressional Committee of Foreign Affairs. He then moved to France and became very active in the French Revolution in the 1790s. He was jailed for a year in Paris because of his radical ideas. He then went back to the United States, where he died in obscurity. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.